Ja, ja. Say that Full again. Eclipse. What shape did you say the earth was? Flat like your head. <laughs> <laughs> what shape do you reckon it is, Rob? Flat. <laughs> That's the way. Looks flat to me. <laughs> so clearly we were just having a laugh at flat earthers because in 2019, nobody takes them seriously anyway. Unfortunately, any person still claiming that the earth is flat is really just showing the audience that they struggle with basic mathematics and understanding geometry. Myself and numerous other flat earth debunking channels have shown countless examples of why the earth cannot be flat. Notably, the equinox sun angles, equatorial mounts, the polar alignment and single axis tracking, and my personal favorite, real aircraft flight plans. The geometry of the equinox, the equatorial mount, and the mathematics of real aircraft flight plans will only work on a ball. They will not work on a flat earth. So I think that anyone that has engaged flat earthers for a while will agree with me that the common denominator with most of them seems to be an extreme weakness in mathematics and spatial awareness. And this is something I noticed very early in the piece when discussing aircraft flight plans and the mathematics we use to obtain the great circle routes. The typical flat earther simply did not understand the formulas I was showing them and were very reluctant to engage in any question that required a mathematical calculation for an answer. Quite often they would overcompensate with posts containing lots of words but no numbers at all. And I think we've all seen that behaviour from our flat earth friends. And I know it's quite easy to just write them off as being dumb people, but I think that's probably a little unfair. Because what I believe is occurring here is that the typical flat earther suffers from a disorder like dyscalculia without realizing it. If you or your child struggles with mathematical formulas, shapes and spatial awareness, it could be dyscalculia, a learning disability that makes it challenging to process and understand math. Now this affects about 5% of the population and apparently many people who have it are undiagnosed and not aware of it. And I believe this is the reason why the average flat earther simply cannot understand how the equinox sun angles prove the earth is not flat. The geometry of those angles with the local noon sun angle matching the latitude the sunrise at 090 degrees and the sunset at 270 degrees all over the Earth on the day of the equinox can only occur if the Earth is a ball. But when you explain that to a flat earther, they simply don't see it. Similarly, with the equatorial telescope mount, the polar alignment angle matching the latitude and the ability to track any star in the sky that is visible with a single axis of rotation at a constant rate, again confirms that the earth is a ball but once more the flat earther is incapable of seeing the geometry. As it shows on this page dyscalculia has only recently been recognized and therefore many adults who suffer from it are likely undiagnosed and completely unaware of it. So let's take a look at another disorder that is well known and easy to diagnose and that is color blindness. A person who suffers from colour blindness will have difficulty identifying certain colours. In the top corner here, we see normal colour vision, where the reds and the greens are obvious to most people. However, to a colour blind person, differentiating between these colours can be quite difficult. They simply don't see them. If we look at the way they test for colour blindness, it is to use an Ishihara test and that is a series of numbers or patterns on charts that contain different colored dots. People with normal color vision will see what we have on the left hand side. We can see the numbers 25, 29, 45, 
56, 6 and 8. However, to somebody that is colorblind, they may not see all of those numbers. In fact, looking at this one here, they can see nothing. Now to a colorblind person, telling them that the number 29 is on that chart means nothing because it doesn't matter how many times you tell them, they simply will not see it. It doesn't matter how many times you tell them, they simply will not see it. It doesn't matter how many times you tell them, they simply will not see it. And I have lost count of the number of times I have heard the phrase geometry blind used to describe flat earthers, and I'm guilty of doing that myself. But geometry blindness is a definite explanation as to why the average flat earther cannot understand why the equatorial mount proves the earth is not flat. Similarly, the equinox sun angles. To the average person, it is quite obvious. We can look at that and within just a few minutes, easily understand how this is not possible on a flat earth. Similarly, with the equatorial mount, the polar alignment angle and the single axis of rotation tracking objects across the sky simply cannot work on a flat earth. But remember, to a geometry blind person who suffers from dyscalculia without realizing it, they simply cannot see it. Just like the colorblind person cannot see the difference between reds and greens, and they cannot see the number 29 on that chart. So let's discuss this idea further in the comments below, and please feel free to share your own experiences with flat earthers, and whether you agree with this theory or not. Remember, it is just my theory, but it is based on more than two years of dealing with flat earthers and asking dozens of them the same questions, which they are incapable of answering. To date, not one flat earther that I have encountered is capable of producing a real aircraft flight plan that works. Now remember, you don't have to be a pilot to produce these flight plans because in my previous challenge, the search and rescue challenge, I received numerous accurate flight plans from Globers who are not pilots. They simply understood the math and yet I did not receive a single entry from any flat earther. So it is this inability with mathematics and this failure to understand the simple geometry of the equinox and equatorial mounts that leads me to believe my theory is correct. What do you think? And if you're a flat earther and you believe you have the mathematical skills and the geometry skills to prove me wrong, please come to my channel and do so. I welcome your attempt. You will need to complete my friendly challenge to all flat earth believers which was to produce a real aircraft flight plan between Sydney Airport and Tahiti, satisfying every element of the challenge with real numbers in the flight plan. This has been outstanding for over two and a half years and to date, not one flat earther has successfully completed the challenge. Only one person attempted it and he wasn't even close. So flat earthers, if you think you have what it takes to prove me wrong on this theory, Please come and do it.